Hey everybody, and welcome to another G Power tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about a couple more t-test family uh, statistical tests. Actually, not a couple more. I'm just going to do one for this video to make it quick, uh, and then um, you know more videos for other kinds. So in this particular video, uh, by the way, still G Power 3.1. There has not has not been an update about it uh, uh, for a while, uh, but you know it's a really robust program. So yeah, let's jump into it. All right. So we are going today to we are going to stay with the test family of t tests. But today, what I want to do is talk about linear bivariate regression, one group size of slope. So in bivariate regression, we have one x and one y. And we are um, trying to see if that x variable correlates with that y variable. And in the language of regression, we're specifically trying to see whether or not that x variable predicts y values in more of a directional sense. That is, the x comes before the y, as opposed to correlation, which is just seeing whether or not these two things are related. So with regression, we're trying to add that temporal thing. So a priori. Now, size of slope, what does that mean? Well, let's pop out the tray here. Now, we need to determine a number of things before we can uh, before we can click calculate and get our total sample size, which is what we're looking for, right? Okay, so on input mode, input mode by default is set to row, which is the parameter for the actual slope, which comes out to R, right? Um, we have our residual uh, error or our residual standard deviation, the standard deviation of X, which then would lead to the slope value and the standard deviation of y. So those things are going to get calculated once we put in these three things. But if I pull down the drop down, you can see, let me move the uh, blue cursor over here. So you can see, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, it makes it pixelated, but at least you can read it. Row, slope. So we, if we have a slope value, we, we can figure out with uh, also with the standard deviation of x will tell us the standard deviation of y. Um, if we have our row, we can get the standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y, which leads to our slope. Um, and we can then use residual slope and standard deviation of x to give us our standard deviation of y, or we can do all of this then to get the slope. So there are multiple options to end up with slope h1, which is the final calculate that we want to go ahead and put in here. Now, of course, smaller numbers, that is numbers closer to zero, means uh, shallower slopes, less steep slopes. And so if you are attempting to find the smallest effect, which is the best idea for an a priori power analysis for sample size, it's always good to overshoot the uh, amount of people that you need to uh, measure in your bivariate regression, then undershoot it. And so shooting for the smallest effect might give you that sample size to overshoot. So you have a lot of, uh, we'll say gas left in the tank based on what value you put in for power here. Okay, so let, I mean, we're gonna, I'm not gonna do all five of these, but let's go ahead and say that we know our, um, the correlation between the two, uh, X and Y, and we know our standard deviation and our, uh, of X and Y, and then that's gonna lead to the slope. So we'll do that. And that means we don't need to worry about the, uh, anything else here. So let's say these two, um, these two variables correlate at 0.36. I'm just making stuff up here. The standard deviation of uh, of the x variable by itself is um, 2.87. Now, I don't know how these will actually work with each other, but, you know, it, numbers are numbers, right? It, it's garbage in, garbage out. This is just trying to tell you um, what it is. And, and you can calculate the um, correlation fairly easily, and you can do that in Excel. You can calculate standard deviations of any variables in Excel as well, or any other spreadsheet kind of program where you're going to hold your data. Or um, if you are grabbing these from a previous a uh, piece of literature that have data, and you're like, okay, well, I want to replicate that. So this is what I'm looking for. This is how many people I need to uh, I need to uh, measure. Um, and let's say the standard deviation of y was 3.52. You know, it doesn't really matter. And then from this, we can calculate what that slope is. Now, you don't have to do any of this at all if you already know what the um, a priori slope is, because then you can just enter it in right here. But imagine you don't, and uh, the the journal article got away with not mentioning slope values, which is odd for a regression. But let's just say that's the case. So if we hit calculate and transfer to main window, it's going to put a number here and then it's going to put that same number uh, in the slope H1. So let's go ahead and click on that. And it says slope H1 is 0.44 because they're correlated pretty well and they have relatively similar standard deviations, which is nice. Now, we're going to go ahead and close the drawer so we can focus on this main window here. Um, as I mentioned in previous uh, previous videos for G-Power. I tend to do most of my tests as two-tail tests, so we are going to keep it as two-tail tests, more conservative, uh, spread the p-value love on both sides. Now, alpha is going to be our criterion for making a, a decision, so we're going to leave that as 0.05, but power, I'm going to change it to the, uh, the um, conventional number of 0.8, and the um, null slope is going to be left at zero, because we are saying that a null slope uh, so that is no relationship between these two variables and it would produce a horizontal line. Uh, there is no change in y over change in x. And so that ends up being zero. Zero divided by any number is zero. And then those two values that we put in for um, our standard deviations also get plugged in here. And then we're going to go ahead and hit calculate. And that's going to give us this total num total sample size number here and an actual power, and which will probably be just above 0.8 because total sample size is, is presented in uh, whole numbers, not decimals. All right. So it looks like 
we are going to need 55 people. And with a bivariate regression, our degrees of freedom is n minus 2. And so that is 53. And we would end up with an actual power just above 0.8. And uh, you can uh, grab this 2.86 non-centrality parameter if you really wanted to. Just um, very briefly in this, in this episode, I'll like, explain why you might want to write that down. Let's, since we're in the family of t-tests, if we click on generic t-test here, you can see that there's not a lot. We, can't, we don't even get a tray to do this because what we're trying to figure out is the non-centrality parameter. And um, you could do this by sensitivity to compute it yourself, but you can also compromise. And you can put that non-centrality parameter in there, which is going to tell you your alpha, actual alpha, your, alpha, your actual beta, and then the power from there and what the critical t-value is would be on that. And so you can see that in this list, there is no a priori method here. And I'm wondering if that's because it has that dot there, if that's what that dot signifies, is that if you choose this one, you're not going to be doing an a priori analysis. Anyways, back to bivariate regression. So that is, so our slope is 0.44. We have a 0.05, 0 0.8, um, and we have our tails here. Calculate those again, and we have a total sample size of 55 needed for this particular bivariate regression. And that's how you do a linear bivariate regression, one group size of slope known for an a priori sample size power analysis. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments, suggestions, and feedback down below, please leave that down below. If you like this video, consider leaving a like. If you like this content, please subscribe for more G Power content. Thanks for watching. Bye.